very regularly. And Aurelia, he's played it a bit. They want to kind of force him on the Scion, though. Yeah, I think we'll have to see if that's what it ends up being. Urgot is banned away. The Sejuani, once again, RMU still really RMU. taking no chances on this one. And the LeBlanc. So, you know, targeting out some of the specifics we thought last time, but there's still some picks left up. And once again, Oberon, he prefers the Rek'Sai enough to get that first pick. It's, that's so strange to me that you would ban Sejuani on blue side and then first pick your jungler. Mm -hmm. Well, and they've left Gragas open too. I mean, Proof did, yeah. did a, a, a fantastic performance on that. Uh, you know, a couple of missed ultimates, but really nothing to worry about. And he, and he massively outclassed Oberon in terms of what he was able to get done for his team. It's, they take it again? Yeah. Oh, and the Nautilus yeah, too. Yeah, the Nautilus was banned last game, so they tried to get Remy on a different champion. Now they're going back to more engage, more get in there. And this actually covers their problem that they had last game where it was Remy not on an engaged support. He was on a disengaged support. So this game, they picked the Callista into it. Ooh. Yeah, that's a little bit different. Ooh, We've got uh, Thresh to combine with it too. Tails is going to try to style on some kids right now because that Callista pick, he brings that out when he wants to just take over the game and make highlight reels. But the Nautilus is a point and click. It's going to lock him up. It's going to get to him with a depth charge. There's a lot that can lock it down right now. Well, and there's a, a lot of distance closing, also some, some gaps as well, maybe able to be cleared away by Bob Chin. We'll see if he does take that lock in on the Azir. And oh, he switched it up, they take the Scion. And of course, Heat Waves, very comfortable on that Lucian. He got very far ahead, he'll take it again. He's going for the Lucian into the Callista. A little bit of a different matchup, but it's still early game aggression between the both of them, though. Mm -hmm. So Tails actually stands a better chance in this lane I, I think, matchup. Yeah, the 2v2 is a lot safer this yeah. time for RMU. And last time, they really wanted to get the lane swap. They got burned by it twice. Well, this time around, probably would just stop with the standard lane. Yeah, only problem is Nala's support is extremely powerful right now. So if he can get in and get the trades and the auto attacks and the staggering blows, then it could go in favor of UBC in that bottom lane fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. The big thing here, though, is they forced the Scion from DJJ. His Scion performances yesterday, he took Smite TP on Scion. And he, his impact was pretty much, can he hit the ultimate? Can he get into that back line? And if you can block it with frontliners like they just selected on RMU, mm -hmm. you're able to stunt him getting there. I was just going to say, trying to keep him irrelevant in this game. The Cho'Gath picked up for Leo. And of course, Zig, once again, giving the Maokai a go. So UBC, they've got their mid pickup. But how are you going to counter Cho'Gath? What do you do, Zyrene? So you don't pick Zed. <laughs> you don't pick Katarina. Yeah, like there's a, not I mean, they can go Orion so, again. So the thing is, there aren't a lot of counters to Cho'Gath. You have to kind of get lane, uh, pressure from side laner or your jungler so that you have gank assistance and actually take him down. So a lot of things are good into it. Nothing is really like overwhelmingly great. It's a lot on your jungler and the attention. There so they yeah, go. they go for the farm fest. I mean, and again, they've, they've still got a massive amount of ball delivery there, like three tanks to combo up with the Orion and the Lucian, who's just going to be pew pewing from the back constantly. Very low cooldown in the calling and everything. And I feel like the wave clear doesn't suffer too much, just the way that Bob Chin plays this Orianna. Yep. So if they get into a siege situation, it still shouldn't be too bad. But again, it, it's very, very tanky front lines for both these teams. I still give that edge to UBC, but RMU, this is a different style, slightly different style uh, for Tails at least, and for Leo. I think they definitely have a bit better uh, damage threat coming out. Yeah, but also Tails and Mini Bestia on this combination of Thresh and Callista. If they can take over the game, get the shot caller going. We saw his Thresh yesterday, hooking people pretty much mid-air. Yeah, this is much more initiation focus. And when you have yes. your shot caller able to in, to initiate those fights, I feel like that that syncs up exactly where they want to go. So, uh, RMU, as you mentioned, you know Tails, he pulls this out when he wants to style on people, and just like Dyrus. They just want to play some League of Legends. Well, that person's not playing. They're spectating League of Legends. Go home if you want to play. Yeah. You, can, you can watch now, you can go home later. But for now, <laughs> you're going to watch this sweet, sweet trophy there that those players are trying to vie for. Not to mention $30,000 a piece in scholarships. As we get ready to load up into game number two, flashing on both of these teams. UBC versus RMU. One up for the University of British Columbia. Can the American squad from Chicago answer back? We'll find out as we load onto the rift. Game two in this best of five. RMU has so much coaching staff here. I believe they brought along six coaches and analysts. Pretty much a person in every position if you would want it that way. So 
you have to imagine that they're between game prep. There's a lot of discussion on what went wrong. Everybody's looking at little individual things, trying to fix them. So coming out of the picks and bands, they might like their composition a little more. Tails is the champion that is harder to shut down, can still perform a little bit in team fights, and he can actually have outplay potential on. Not a lot of outplay potential on Jinx there. It's all getting out of the range of enemies as you can attack them. Or as Double Wolf would call it, auto spacing. Mm. Yes, indeed. So hedging their bets a little bit better this time, RMU, to start this game off. We see the line of scrimmage kind of blurring as Oberon like close to being pinched between a DJJ and a Proof, and he backs away. Still a couple of wards. Not too deep, a little bit there by the Gromp. This Proof is going to take a sapling to the face, backing away. But we do see a lane swap once again starting for RMU. This time, UBC aren't suspecting a thing. RMU is also a very practiced squad. They may imagine that UBC doesn't have as much lane swap experience. Yeah, but these Anything guys play to get a challenger all the time, though. This is true. Mid lane, we have seen a, a, a number of different Shogas styles across the professional play. We'll see what Leo makes on this champion, of course. Um, won't be the first time he's rocked it. Yeah. Against the University of Michigan, you know, he's a very respectable 7 one Oh, oh mini bestia, yeah. mini bestia. Uh oh, we got a roam here. Okay. Oh, oh still stole well. it. Oh, give me that. Gets another. Give me those oh. breaks. DJJ's got he's to be already frustrated smited by that. It too. That's the thing. He's already used smite Slow on it. Slow down that scion, and he's, he is not. He has not given up an inch to this one. And yeah, that raptor. You got to fight over the big one too. We give it up. Oh my god. Oh wow. If he steals this. Oh, it's not gonna kill it. It's not gonna kill it. Oh, oh, okay, he gets oh, it. Oh, 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 close calls though. <laughs> Wow, Mini Bestia, frustrating DJJ to start this one off. <laughs> he doesn't, I can't he, believe it. He doesn't get level two off of that. Nope. So he's going to have to walk around a little bit and double jungle in this lane swap. Which is going to slow down Proof a little bit, too. Yeah, it's going to slow down Proof. I mean, that's, a, that's a great start. And Tails was by himself. He got the solo EXP. And um, Zig gets his experience as well, oh sitting man. in the bottom lane. And Mini Bestia gets some experience. It's Everyone cool. wins if you're RMU. <laughs> that's, a, that's actually true. Everybody on that on their team benefited from that, aside from the mid laner. Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, I think Leo will be all right for now. He's just farming away happily, chasing Bob Shin back. Uh, down to the bottom side, you know, Zig, he's very practiced this. He shouldn't have any trouble dealing in a 2v1, even with the damage threat that Heat Waves can put out. You know, Tanky Nautilus, great in the 2v2. It's going to be hard to, to break through, but Zig is just focused on survival right now. And, you know, he's he's beat DJJ in farm. That's all you really need. Well, DJJ showing himself over the scuttle crab that was taken by RMU. He's not the sneakiest of scions. No, not necessarily. And if he does oh, decide man, to go the, through that jungle, oh, he might go the, for the, the mid. Leo what? What? could be the, in some trouble. Uh, Didn't expect <laughs> a scion there, did he? And the Axe won't get the knockup. He's going to have to burn his flash. And Proof comes in. Oh, Ignite's down. That's going to be first oh. blood. Who gets it? It's going to be Bob Jin. They saw him coming, too, over the scuttle crab. And then oh. they were too slow to react. So UBC yeah, get themselves a bit of gold lead. Well, look at this. They're going to start for a very early dragon. And there's nothing RM you can do about it right now. Yeah, Leo. He was just trying to keep the pressure on in mid lane. He knows that he has to take it to Bob Chin, especially after that performance he gave last game and the performance he's given all tournament long. So this dragon, another early dragon going over to UBC, being very, very, very objective control and objective focus this game because the games that they played previously, it was all about, hey, can we team f out team fight them? They don't think they can out team fight RMU unless they force them around objectives and start snowballing and using the lead they get from the laning phase. This is a proper way to play these team comps out and also a great way to play League of Legends in general. Yeah, and it's it's working for them. It turns what was a early game deficit into an advantage now. Uh, 2v2 in the bottom, but that of course is Mini Bestia joined by Zig. DJJ's back up in the top for a while. Tails had pretty much solo farm, but in this oh. particular situation, you know, they're putting a lot on Tails once again. I'm a little worried about Leo now, now that he's given up that one kill. If Bob Shin, playing this very aggressive Oriana style, can't punish him. They, but know, they know Bob doesn't have Oberon's flash. Oberon's over the wall. Yeah, and he doesn't have Ignite either. He's not going to opt to take that, though. It's a little close to the tower for comfort. Okay. Instead, he's going to move up. He oh. will spot Proof. Does a 180. This Proof dashes his way into the Bramble back pit. Oberon's moving up to the top. He could double time on DJJ, who's lacking a couple of summoners himself. Wouldn't have got him out of a situation, but the ward 
spots him out, and he immediately moves back to position. Oberon just going to have to settle for that. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on DJJ top just in terms of presence and the fact that he got harassed by Mini Bestia. Level one and put him very far behind. And DJJ is the shot caller. When the shot caller's a little bit behind, you don't always have the same grasp of the game as you normally do. And sometimes when you're really far ahead of the rest of your team, you fall into the same problem. Speaking of really far ahead, Oberon was a uh, much better position than Leo. As we look at the bottom side, Heat Waves gets ignited, but he will make it out alive for now. So that summoner is blown by Mini Bestia. Oberon going down to the bottom side. He is getting pings flying left and right. As Remy looks to body block, Heat Waves goes back to base right now. Just a couple of wards from UBC is all it takes to spot out the Rek'Sai. There's a CS advantage on Tails over Heat Waves now. You're going to wait on item spikes, possible turret take, and then they're going to swap it back and use that advantage. But they've Just... already given up one dragon. That's the thing, though. Like, yep. you, give, you give up a little bit by putting your AD carry top, and you can see how that affected them. Remy not taken down yep. as there he anchors away. And yep. there's the swap come back. You're right. Bill's Water Cutlass comes out. They immediately swap it back, try to press that advantage, build Water Cutlass to Pickaxe. And then they get Maokai up in the top lane, and Maokai has a CS advantage, D Signature, over DJJ. And the fact that DJJ is also going to build Cinder Hulk first and Challenging Smite is another thing that's going to give Signature a pretty decent lane. He's not going to build any resistances. He's not going to be able to um, sustain too much either. Like, it's a pretty good lane for him. Yeah, so despite that, that uh, I would say early misplay that allowed the Dragon for UBC. RMU is still in a much better position than they were last game. They, they really just had no chance to get an edge anywhere on the map. This time around, they're playing on much more even footing. The question is, can they get themselves into a favorable position and start pushing UBC back? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, Leo is playing a little more defensive than before. And I, when I talked about Cho'Gath matches in the mid lane and how it, a lot of it is on the jungle pressure, they exerted that jungle pressure from Proof very, very early on. Even when they're taking his Rek'Sai away, he's still able to perform on this Gragas and keep the pressure up. Going Sightstone, first item after completing Trailblazer, just so he has those early wards on the map. But Oberon doing exactly the same thing, just matching each other's vision. Doing exactly what they need him to do, meanwhile. In the mid, Bobchin's got himself a little bit of free farm for just a minute. A Leo pushing back very, very far, not trying to get uh, in range to be picked up anytime soon. He was having some flashbacks earlier on. And now you actually see Proof going around the other side. Oberon down. It looks like we might see a blue buff trade, except for the fact that, you know, blue's already gone on RMU's side. Instead, the long path for Proof just clears out yeah. some wolves. Oberon's not going to take it just yet. Nope. He's got a lot of wards there, though. Yeah, he'll know got... if anyone tries. No, here he goes. He starts it up. Well, he doesn't know Proof's position just yet. And yeah. now Proof... He pinged the enemy, he pinged his own blue, saying uh, this Leo. is where Rek'Sai is going to be, and he's going after Leo again. Yep, but this time Leo uh, is able to back away quick enough. Throws down the rupture as well, prevents any extra damage coming onto him. Meanwhile, Tails and Mini Bestia push this far forward. The hook gets dodged by Heat Waves. Oberon smelling some blood, looking for proof. Oh, he gets that's a body slam. some damage, but he has to back away. Bob Chin was there for the defense as well. Leo will get the knockup, the rupture onto Bob Chin. They go right back to it. Tails and Mini Bestia were roaming up. Instead, they go back this time. So, RMU, a little bit better control of this uh, side of the Dragon Pit. Right now, it's a minute away before it spawns. No vision really in the immediate area, but they are not keen on letting UBC get another one. We've already seen what happens when UBC gets themselves a serious number of Dragons in the early game. Yeah, and RMU's been doing a really good job of CSing this game. You can see almost every lane, including supports and junglers, have a CS advantage, except for that mid lane. Yeah, I mean, we all know why that happened, but it's not a, a massive disparity there for Leo. Uh, he's just been stacking himself up. You can see him growing nice and strong. Big old Cho'Gath looks like he'll take a bite out of this blue buff in just a second, or rather, a rupture and a scream. And the reason that it's so important that they get this advantage off of lane swap is RMU were banking on that lane swap to give them this type of advantage because of the fact that they think that they're better at these types of situations. And that's why they opted into it. Because Callista and Dilution is an okay matchup. Sometimes you can dodge things. But the fact that they got this advantage is big for them because then they're even even after the kill. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's especially big just for both these teams who put so much stock into their early game. Uh, it, it really changes the outlook of it entirely. And, and yes, there's still a lead for UBC. It is 
Not massive, however. There is a one Dragon advantage. They're looking to make it two right now, and they will be the first to the party. So RMU, once again, are not in a position to really Leo's do back. anything about this. Yeah. Leo's back in the mid. Mini Bestia gets a ward out, but they won't be able to react in time. It would need a Rek'Sai tunnel, and it's not available. Slow and steady wins the Dragon. Smited down by proof of payment. Number two once again in the pockets of UBC. DJJ, twisted advance onto him. He gives a shout, but it's in the wrong direction, and he gets his ult popped immediately. But they don't have the damage to take him down. And RMU come up empty-handed once again. Giving over these dragons early off of back timings for items. You got to keep those dragon timers. You got to keep on top of them because UBC, they're aiming for another 35-minute dragon at this point. And that is very, very troubling for yeah. Robert Morris University if they give that up yet again. So slight gold advantage. We'll see if they can turn it around. Heat Tails. waves is caught. He's going to go down. And Tails picks up his first kill of the game and for his team. This is the advantage they wanted for this Kalista. Tails had an absolutely terrible game last game. Shut down, camped, bad lane matchup. Now giving him a champion that gives him outplay potential. Same thing with Mini Bestia. These are two skill-reliant champions, and they're going to go for some kills in the jungle. Oh, that is a nice dodge out of the Shockwave. Three members of UBC there. It cost a flash for Oberon, but he makes it out. They're still sticking around. Yeah, they want to stop and harass Proof as much as possible on this red buff. We'll see if they can do anything about it. DJJ is backing. He does get his back canceled really quickly there by Signature, but I feel like this is a really dangerous place to be. Proof is going to go... Not messing around, smites down the red, mm. takes it back for himself. And RMU, they're still kind of fishing for a pick here, but I don't think they'll be able to get it, so they back away. Little strange there. Zig had an advantage in the top lane, and he didn't come to red. Because he's afraid of DJJ possibly TPing in. Because DJJ was low on HP and mana at that point. I mean, point. they had a lot of vision in that jungle. You'd think they'd be able to spot out uh, where he was coming oh. from. Uh, Leo looking to chase down Bobchin. Some serious amount of damage. Yep. If he gets another combo like that, he can kill Bobchin. Oh, yeah. If he lands... We, we've seen a flash ignite eat yeah. before. If he lands a Q, he can flash W. Uh, maybe not when he's that far under tower, but still. Yeah. But that's why Bobchin now has to play under his tower. His CS might take a little bit of a hit if he doesn't back. Because once you eat one of those, it puts you in kill range for the next combination. Well, over on. Supports coming to Raptors. <laughs> story of this game. That's pretty much the story of it, exactly. Those, that exact Raptor pit has been very confused this time around. Yeah, Oberon saw this before, so he's backing off very early. You'll see Remy coming back up to top to give a little bit more support to Zig. They look to try and push down Ooh. this tower, but Zig's being very, very safe. Tails actually they chasing down DJJ. In. Yeah, he's got a lot of damage. There's a lot of spears sticking out of the he's undead got no right flash. now. And the oh. ult is stopped by another one as DJJ takes the express route back under his tower. Yeah, it's a great way to handle this Scion that has no flash. Keep pressure on him. Force his own. When DJJ is looking for wards like that, now he's going to farm. He's going to try to farm up the Gromp, and you can see the ward comes over the wall for Mini Bestia at the Gromp pit, and DJJ has to back off from yeah. it. And so then he goes back to it now. Laning-wise, RMU is doing just fine. The issue is if they keep giving up these dragons, if they keep committing mental mistakes uh, and backing on the timers, then it can start to turn in the other direction regardless of the gold lead for RMU. So it's still very slight for them. Let's see if they can turn it into more kills, turn it into objectives. For now, we're still standing at a big fat zero for towers. But the lane swap back to try and avoid tails before the BF sword. Heatwaves now has his BF sword and he's still going, going to go top lane. This matchup seems very mismatched in a lane swap. It's almost like if if they had decided to do regular lanes in the previous game, where it's like bottom's a losing lane, top lane's a losing game, losing lane. Right now, it, it doesn't seem an ideal situation to lane swap as UBC. The Kalista's going to be able to really just dodge everything that Sion throws out there and always have kill pressure on him. And Maokai can always turn her gank around and just actually beat up Heatwave. We saw in the bottom lane when it was the pair of Mini Bestia plus Signature beat Heat Waves and Remy out of the lane at level four. Yeah, it does make you wonder exactly what they're going for, but this is this is the thing. Maybe they trust in their ability to just outplay, even if it's a not optimal situation, but this is where RMU's strategical thinking really should come in handy. For now, it's definitely not hurting them any. Leo did take some damage on this mid versus Bobchin, but Bobchin's running a little bit low on mana. He won't be able to keep spamming quite so fast right there. 
Okay, so they leave their AD carry solo top and they send three people bottom. They can push this quick, even with it three tanks. Uh, well, maybe not if they don't want to face Oberon. They know that there was a potential roam coming in from Leo. Mini Bestio's there. Yeah, there's a TP behind them, so the idea or the fact that Signature could TP into the back line was a threat. He was half HP, though. There's no way to stop him either. There's not They're any CC available for Heat Waves to cancel the teleport should it happen, uh, even if they get sight of it immediately. So Mini Bestio, Oberon, looking nope. to chase down Proof, who gives up on the Crab. Yep, one minute on Dragon. And Never the Crab known lasts definitely to more than a minute. Stop in the middle of a meal. So the crab's gonna go down in favor of RMU. 47 seconds, as you said, should be plenty of time. So this time RMU, they're playing this out very smart. Let's just hope they don't uh, miss time it once again. A lot of vision invested in that yeah. bottom side. They do not want to give another dragon to UBC. I mean, they've taken seven straight in the series so far. Yeah, they're being pretty adamant about that dragon time right now, but you can see UBC backed. You saw proof of payment back. Bob Chin's like, all right, I got the items I need to set up for this dragon so that he's there on time. RMU not doing as much backing right before. Tails does hit his BF sword on top of the components of a Blade of the Rune King minus the dagger. They're controlling it very well. That position, we'll see what they can get. They zone Bob Chin away as proof is oh. there to watch. Mini Best just thrown in. There's a teleport coming down bottom though. Spent Heatwave. Tails Already so much damage, though. But Tails, he's gonna have to kite back. Pulled by the Lantern. DJJ runs right into Mini Bestia as he flashes. He takes even more. The heal is gonna go down, but he waves. He's also so low. Tails oh, looking to no. chase him down. He can't land the Javelin, and he will fall as well. Oh, the vision in the world won't be enough to stop the Dragon at that point. And Oberon also having to flash away. They may get a bite out of Proof Leo does it. So trade's happening across the board. It is, however, a two for one in favor of UBC, and they will snag themselves a tower on by. The TP in from DJJ made that fight, that skirmish in the bottom lane go their favor. No, oh, Leo! Bob Chin Get should be able to go down here. I think so. Leo has just enough with the spikes, but now UBC, they know they have a small timing window. They start pushing for the dragon. Oberon is waiting. A shark in the water, but they've got the anchor on him right now. The Colin comes out to push him away. Can he come in for the steal? No flash available. He's got the tunnel. If he wants to use it, he's got to go try. He's not going to be able to secure it. It's DJJ who does that, but can they get a pick? They've certainly got a hook, and there's nowhere for Scion to go. They're going to knock him down. It goes over to Oberon, but once again, UBC secures the dread. That feel when the top laner has a stronger smite than you, and you're the jungler. It's a bad feel, Zyrene. Yeah. Basically, when there's a smite top laner, and you're the jungler, you're pretty much backup smite at that point. You're two levels lower than him, and it's just flat out stronger. You're not going to be able to out smite I mean, him. This is the objective focus gameplay. There. There. They, they knew that they could take it anyways, and they trusted in their ability to out smite. Oberon takes some serious damage under tower there. But even though RMU is fighting a little bit better now, three dragons to zero, that makes a big difference. The mobility now comes into play for UBC. They're not down by that much gold. Heat Waves is already there up in the top to push back waves. They weren't even able to trade towers, really. Yeah. So RMU still doesn't have the one, even though it's very, very close in the middle. UBC, they're still playing quite well, despite the disadvantages they put themselves in. Yeah, and RMU closed that gap of the 1,000 gold lead that was kind of looming over them for a bit. UBC able to bring it back to even as well, because it keeps fluctuating back and forth after the kills. Leo doing a really good job at coming back after that early game start. Mini Bestia, whoa! They're looking for proof, but the hook won't land. Let's see how big the Gragas can be. Big enough to survive that one. Tails out to sell for a pink board. Snack where he wanted a meal. Nice jukes there, but oh. look at that. They're going immediately after Bob Chin. Ah, the rupture's not going to go, but Shark under the lane. Goes right back. It's a They're low still turret. looking for this turret. It's a low turret. They want to force this down. DJJ in the bottom lane. They have no TP. Nobody's coming to answer him here either. Yeah, they have to trade this or give it up. DJJ is actually not going to push himself, but there's still a large minion wave. Leo now still being answered by Bob Shin. RMU just can't get an objective here. And if RMU gets frustrated, it's a big problem. We saw Tails in that last fight flash forward to try and get a javelin for a kill on the heat waves. Pretty ballsy play at that point because that's when he's. That's what I talk about when it's like when he plays Callista, he wants to make a highlight reel. He wants to be the player who's outplaying people and uses outplay potential in his skill. Now let's Just see if like he can this. do it here. Yep. Heat waves. Oh, he throws the calling down though. Tails is and gonna be downed. Sometimes it bites him like that. Yep. That's what happens. You try to get flashy. Sometimes you get flashed on. Yes. Just like that.
it's the it's kind of the fault of Tails. Is he's a really really good mechanical player, but sometimes he tries to leverage that too much, and then it comes back to bite him. He wants to outplay. He wants to make the highlight reel. Yeah, didn't work from this time. One and two now on the Callista. Still better than he was doing on the Jinx game. UBC's not been able to shut him down, but. We'll see if they can keep RMU at bay here in the mid. So far, they do. Bob Chin again. It's Waveclaw and Soriana. Not too bad. And they stall it out once again. Leo is a huge part of this game. The fact that he hasn't gotten out of the laning phase and he's actually ahead, he's got two kills on himself. This Cho'Gath, when he reaches team fights, it doesn't matter that Proof has damage reduction. It doesn't matter that it's a tanky Scion. He's going to be able to chew through and shut these people down with a silence. Exactly. True damage is a wonderful thing. For Robert Morris University, they're going to look to put that to its fullest. Tails still going to have to uh, rein himself in a little bit. Really do like the way that they've been playing, roaming around with Mini Bastion, trying to get picks yep. here as you Speaking see over on. Yep. And Tails pulls him in, throws him out in the slingshot, not long enough. They're using Fate's Call pretty much on cooldown to try and find something, and UBC has to dodge everyone that comes out. Proof. That's the second one in a row that's been thrown at him, and he's done a really good job of dodging them. But this time, they may be able to finally polish off this tower. Between Tails and Leo, they have the damage, but they're going to have to be really careful. Tails, that is way too much damage, and he's going to go down. Leo takes a bite out of Bob Chin. It'll just barely be enough. As oh. the Ignite goes, the hook on the fadeaway. DJJ caught up, locked up in the box, but they just too tanky to go, and it is a one-for-one -one trade. UBC and RMU. That's exactly what I'm talking about with the Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath is so strong in the mid lane as an AP mage. His burst is huge. His AP ratios are off the charts. And the fact that he scales his AP into true damage, he just shreds and noms somebody. And that looked like an unfavorable trade. But in the end, it does come out pretty much even here. And the turret takes a little bit of damage. Yeah, and you know, dead even is really how we got to call it in, in a lot of categories. It's five to five in kills. There is almost a thousand gold lead for UBC right now, and they have that three dragon advantage. That's the real tipping point here. They've got a whole extra amount, APAD, and of course, damage to the minions and the uh, movement speed boost. You know, they keep knocking these ones down. The fifth dragon buff will help them out immensely. Just like it did last game, RMU can't let this happen again. Yeah. They have to have objective control, and it has to be on their mind, and that's what UBC is trying to turn this series into. Not team fights, not what you would expect with all the prep. It's dragon after dragon after dragon for them, and that's the name of the game. Ward it up, be there a minute early, time your recalls right before. Yep. Different UBC than what we were seeing, and look at this, they cut them off. They're going to get this turret. Yeah, they will. Oberon has to go over into his own Raptors turret, downed. There's a teleport in the back. They're going to look to try and get a catch here. Here comes Zik, but he backs away, immediately turns his attention onto Remy. Maybe they can pick him off here, throw a hook right in front of him. Line and sinker Leo takes a bite out of him, and they get one for none here, but can they turn this into the Dragon? Still 17 seconds away. 22, 23 and a half minutes into this game. Still very, very close, but they need the Drake to stay relevant, Zyrene. Oh, they're not done yet. Oh, man, they've got they've caught Bob Chin. Chin. He is going down. That signature coming up with the pick. Can they keep rolling it forward? Leo, flash, Q, dodged out by DJJ. Proof in the Baron pit, sitting around. They've got to just go for the Dragon at this point. They've got a number advantage. No minions in the middle. Yes, they can tank it for just a second. So grab as much as they possibly can off the timing window here. It's going to be top lane here for UBC, trying to cut their losses and get a turreted response. They'll give up their first dragon of the series to RMU here. And RMU, they're wiping beads of sweat off their face after that one. They managed to grab themselves the first dragon. As you said, in the series, they can now turn their attention to the bottom side. Yes, they will trade their top turret, so all the outers knocked down for UBC. But RMU now have a chance to add a little bit more gold into their pockets. Mini Bestia with the play there, Wait, but there's so this? many people on the bottom side of the map. UBC taking a ballsy Baron attempt. Pings flying as they see Leo they see there. It. There's no responsibility from Tails. He cannot get involved in this one at all. He might as well just keep pushing. It's still a 4v4. Remy going very low. There's the bite. Zig going in. Remy's flashing away from this one. The Baron's been peeled away. Proof is oh, low in the pit. Ball. Remy's caught up. This may have been just too cocky from University of British Columbia. Heat waves going down. Signature grabs himself a they keep chasing DJJ, just trying to go back to the turret that no longer exists for him. Proof maybe makes it out, but now RMU on the hunt 
through the jungle of UBC. Mini Bestia with the hooks and Leo with the bites. These are the two people that you need to watch out for. When you looked at the previous copy, like, oh, it's a one damage threat with Jinx. They fixed that problem here for RMU. Huge, huge, huge burst potential that you have to pay attention to on the Cho'Gath. AOE team fight as well. And then you throw Tails in the mix. Blade of the Ruin King on him. They're able to go after this Baron. Yes, they can. They do not have the Feast available, so it won't be extra security there. DJG sniffing around the side, looking for something. They may have to peel off this one as Bob Chin's here. They waited a little bit Ooh. of time. Oberon is going to have to get thrown a line to get out of this one, so they can't quite take it. And they're going to back in mass here. Will UBC try this again? Are they going to do it two in a row? I don't know. I don't think so. No, no, Arm, you can't back. They can't afford to back right now. They have to, though. Their HP bars are too low. Yeah, they have to back. This they're going to they're gonna get their mid, mid three, turret three members on the mid. shoved in. Let's see if Zig can hold them off for just a moment. Staggering their backs just a little bit. So you see Mini Bestia head back to Fountain. The rest of them are coming in. Are going back, rather. They're going to give up the second tier tower. So just waiting around too long. RMU should have backed immediately after that fight. Yeah, there's the back timers right there. RMU struggling with that a little bit throughout the series when to back when they need to actually have those items in inventory and when they need to have full hp but if they, they can keep fighting like that yes. that is how they will win this game if they can catch ubc one by two by three it just turns into a big victory for them then they can knock down turrets unopposed but for right now ubc still holds that lead as slim as it is and of course the two dragon advantage Oh, the Zonia's Hourglass coming out for Leo. He's really becoming the serious threat of this team. Yeah. They tried to shut him down early. They were like, all right, one kill, Bob Chin, take it away. And now... It's still his only death. Exactly. Since that first blood, he's 4-0-1-3. Don't make him angry. He gets very big and green. <laughs> he's already green. Roving around here, he'll look to go up to the top side. They're pinging on heat waves. They know he's there. Maybe collapse down. If he gets caught, he's he, instantly uh, burst. There's still the tower there. So he's in a relatively safe position right now. And they know Leo's there. The pink ward's spotting him out as well. But still, two big tanks, one of them with massive AP ratios. Might be able to shove this one down. But heat waves has got the wave clear. Remy's coming up too. Oh, it's a teleport. Oh, whoa, whoa. Teleport up top. They, they want to force this. Yes, they do. False sense of security for just a moment. Yeah, Zig, they have to back away from this one. Zig might be in some serious trouble. A DJJ runs smack dab into Leo. Goes golden for just a second, but they're collapsing around it. Mini Bestia realizes this is a lost cause. He's got to get out of town. Oh, there's oh, the hook. There we go. But Bob oh, no. Chin says negative. <laughs> Mini Bestia isolated from the team. He's gone. Right into Bob Chin's lap. And that's a barren attempt for UBC right now. Off on the backside, Oberon could attempt for the steal, but they are well aware of his presence, and Bobchin is being sent to clean up the threat. Tails, the only other member alive, yep. pushing in on the bottom side, but this can't help but thinking will be a clean Baron for University of British Columbia after a series of catches. UBC being at the right place at the right time, and RMU caught off guard the opposite at this point completely tails off guard. bottom lane continuing to farm continuing to try and get more cs in his pocket so he can try and carry his team but when a fight like that happens top and you get absolutely nothing for it it's huge you can see right here on the minimap he's bottom he's not even near a turret he's not be a clean baron not going to get anything for this and then djj's tp and the extension all the way to leo Gets heat waves, but they don't have the follow up because the ultimate from Scion hits right then. Really, really big. And I then, mean, Zig gets out for just a second, but then negative. Whoop. That's a big ball. Mini Bestia. You, but that's the thing is when a team fight like that happens, Bob Chin is already on his way. O Oberon tries to get there as fast as possible, and Tails wasn't near an objective, was bottom lane just sitting trying to farm. He's completed his last whisper. He has a recurve bow, he has a VF sword as well, just for damage. He's had that BF sword for a very long time. He's been sitting on pieces of it, and then they got a whole lot of armor? Not really. Yeah, I mean, they, they need... RMU really, really needs to be together for this. The, the side pushing really hasn't netted them much of anything. There's still a, an outer turret up in the top side. You know, we saw that last bit of action happening, but in a number of injury, even numbers, RMU should be able to make some plays, but they keep getting caught nearly. There is 
Oh, oh hooked in the air. Oh my goodness, Proof gets stopped up for just a second. Over on low, there's a shockwave, pulls in Leo as he throws down his Zanyas. In comes Zig from the backside. No teleport required. Oberon still being fired down. Then he bests you now. He goes down. Zig followed by Remy. He twists and advances his way back in, but not enough damage as Tails moves in, makes the outplay. But UBCs, the rest of DJJ is also there. And Oberon, he is going to go not. Oh, he does go down. I thought he made it out. Minions are pretty strong. Minions are pretty strong. Three, four, one is that score so far. RMU just not able to fight it out. Yes, they removed Proof's Baron buff, but they are looking like they will give up another dragon. And again, Tails moves his way up to the top. They can't really contest this at all, so maybe they can grab a turret as a consolation prize, but UBC just rolling ahead. Four dragons. Again, 36 minute mark possible for that fifth dragon for UBC. And in that fight, Leo, he didn't have his ultimate, his feast up just yet. He got it near the end of the fight, and that's a big burst part of this team. When they run damage threats that are mildly ultimate reliant, because that's the burst, his combo, his QW, have very long cooldowns on them. When he throws those out and he also doesn't have any CDR in his build, if you miss those, you're not going to be blowing anybody up. Throws it out, doesn't hit anybody there, turns and he'll throw his silence onto multiple people, and it's good, but the culling's already going on. The damage is still coming out. And then Leo's a non-factor here. He, yeah, gets he pretty much has to throw the Zonias just because he was the one caught up by the Shockwave and they didn't want him to just get chunked immediately. But anyways, yeah, it the looked, rest of RMU starts melting. It looked like a back and forth fight, but then all the damage dealers from UBC off on the right, all the tanks keeping the damage dealers busy. Oh, and then Oberon, I mean, this mistake coming in here, he really should not have been there in the first place as low as he was dealing with DJJ. All said and done, UBC come up clean. They've got themselves a 3,000 gold advantage. Doesn't seem like much. Four dragons to one, though. That spells a big difference. Yeah. Tails hitting his Runance Hurricane Spike here. But there's a, there is a Righteous Glory completed for Remy. So getting to Tails is not going to be a problem. But Tails trying to keep himself away, throwing Mini Bestia. And it's been a good combination. Mini Bestia and Tails, this combo during team fights has been really good. It's just Tails just hasn't had the, the power behind his punch. Yep, we'll see what happens here as Zig looks to chase on. Proof, Mini There's Bestia's going in. He's still very tanky, though, and the rest of the team is looking to answer. Proof, not quite down yet. As he gets a shield out, Leo will finish him off finally. Zig still in the front line, but Tails, he gets melted by Bob Chin, and Signature is trying to tank the line, but he can't as Oberon bails out of the way. Leo is left to die. It looked good for a minute, but RMU give up four kills and a triple going over to Bob Chin on this bloodthirsty Oriana. That was huge. The fact he was able to just blow tails up they're gonna get at least the turret and the inhibitor for this they're not gonna get a whole lot more off, off of that but there's still a lot of full HP bars here they might be able to get at least one Nexus turret yeah they just tank it up as the minions were a little bit late to the party inhibitor number one going down UBC smell blood in the water and hey. they follow it all the way to a 33 minute inhibitor this is looking rough for RMU reserved calls here all game it's been Fight for dragons. Don't fight over nothing. Fight over dragons. I feel like the UBC that they were talking when they were talking about themselves. They're like, all right, we've gotten smarter about the game. We brought Heaven Time on as our coach. We're playing the game not as bloodthirsty as we were before. I feel like what the games we saw yesterday were old UBC, and today we're seeing a UBC that they were hiding from us. Yeah, it's sort of like they uh, lifted the training weights, and all of a sudden. We didn't just see somebody who was uh, stronger and faster than we thought. We saw a whole different team. Let's take a look at that last fight because that was over as yeah. soon as it began. Right here, Tails positioning. Remy walks up, uses his R, and Tails knows this is going to make contact with him. And when it makes contact with him, it knocks him up right next to where Oriana is going to be and throws the ball at him. And Tails is wiped off, and he's their consistent damage threat. He yeah, at that point, everyone has to scatter. And you see Leo. Yeah, he's tanky, but it doesn't matter when there's that many people there. Yeah, Leo's their burst, their AoE persistent damage threat is Tails. He needs to stay alive with that Runance Hurricane Blade of the Ruin King and kite around. Keeping this backline alive is pivotal to RMU winning these fights. Absolutely. So can't just rely on Leo at this point. Tails, he needs to be in a better position and Honestly, Remy did exactly what they needed in that last fight. He has been consistently haranguing the back line. And we'll see if that continues as we've got under a minute to the next Baron. UBC's got to be eyeballing that one as they clear out the vision coverage. Skullcrab dips back under the water. He'll be back, though. 
Yeah, they're eyeing the Baron, whether or not it's actually for the Baron or for the fight. This is how they bait a fight. They have an advantage, they have the dragons. And they have the position at the moment. They've definitely got the lead on top of it. 35 minutes is the time on the clock. They've got 6,000 ahead in the bank. And they're feeling nice and confident as they've knocked down pretty much almost all the towers on the outer side. There's still one remaining in the top, but they've got an inhibitor in the middle. So they yep. have a lot of pressure on their side, and RMU have to find a response. So they could be down 0-2 in this final match. That is not the position you want to be in for this eSports organization that they have crafted over the last year. UBC has been crafted over multiple years at That's this true. point. That's true. I mean, they've got they've got experience on their side, and their players have competed at the highest level in Challenger for quite some time. That experience starting to shine through now as the Baron has started. RMU knows their time is now to react, but DJJ has already caught into Oberon. This could end poorly for them. Twisted advance into Zig. Mini Bestia trying to back away. Oberon goes in. He goes down. Shockwave pulls tails, flash away. They're trying to kite back, but they just don't have enough damage in Leo. The Zanyas again, but we've seen how this story ends. A flash. That's maybe a different ending to it for now, but Bobchin has already picked himself up a kill into Zig. They've lost two of their front line. Leo, Mini Bestia is going to go down here as well as Proof just slams right into him. Leo and Tails trying to sneak a back away, but they're having nothing of that. Proof diving in onto Leo now, throws the barrel, <laughs> anticipating a flash over maybe. He doesn't know the flash is already gone, but it doesn't matter. Remy's there to back him up. They're, Tails they're trying to They're just trying to stop the back because they they're trying to end the game. They cannot stop this at all right now as uh, Tails is being totally pushed away by Remy. Three members of UBC the knocking, down the, knocking down the Nexus turrets. You're right. Oberon, he comes back up, but he's just one Rek'Sai. What can he do against these three members of UBC? The answer, not enough, as Bob Chin might be zoned away. Leo, though, going very low. DJJ knocked up now, but it's, it's a bare Nexus. The super minions firing it away. They may have stopped it for now. Zig's going up. This is a desperate charge to save the day. Heat Waves dodging out the hook. DJJ stopped on his charge. He'll go down, but he's a sacrificial scion as dragon number five should be completed in just a moment thanks to proof and remy ubc making sure that they stop the backs for long enough looks like they're not going to end the game off of that but proof and remy stayed alive trying to stop the backs they have eventually let tails get back and then they're like oh wait dragon's up we can just take this because if they had actually backed themselves or went to the uh, went to the base it would have been an, a dragon falling into the hands of RMU. Exactly. And so they, they play it out. More. They play it out very smartly. They nearly take the game. They knock down the two Nexus turrets. And, you know, the inhibitor's still not quite up here for RMU. So they've got a big gaping wound in their front side. Maybe they rush the Baron right now, but there is still some vision in the pit. And they have to be oh so careful. They're not even going to attempt it. When you have these five dragons, you just have so much fighting power. There's a ward. In, the, in base. the base. They know everything. There, there's also some tunnels, so Oberon can possibly stop this, but this ward gives UBC an option of TPing in. The inhibitor's back up, so he'd have to deal with that first. He's not, he wouldn't be able to end the game, and it is a Scion. But the fact that they have this option is big. They also get to see who backed and who's walking out of the base and how far away they are. Like right now, they're able to see, oh, Maokai's walking through. This is a free Baron. Absolutely. And they get it. Easy peasy. 38 and a half on the clock. They've got the Baron buff. They've still got Dragon 5 ticking away. We saw this last game, Zyrene. We saw how it ended for RMU. And they may be staring down a 0 and 2 start in this final matchup. UBC coming out with pretty much the same strategy in terms of gameplay. Farm, 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 even though they didn't win the laning phase. They ended up just taking it at Dragon Fights. Objective focus gameplay, that is what they've been playing. And now they look to make the final push. DJJ in the front, drawing the attention. Zig is just not nearly tanking up, but a big rupture comes through. A massive shockwave. They're going to pick off Zig. They look for more. As much as RMU tries to do to stop this one, they can't stop. The Bob Chin Oriana, massive on the double kill. Remy is going to be able to pick up Oberon as well. And Tails trying to kite back. No, he goes down. There's a triple kill. There's the wipe. The Nexus goes down. Not quite 40 on the clock. And UBC 2-0. Oh, to start this best of five. UBC look completely different than we saw them yesterday. We keep saying it, but it's just so true. It's extremely true. The fact that they struggled against Texas A&M 
and it looked like they were going to lose a game against them at one point. And then they just played a bloodthirsty fight style. Now their team comps look better. The fact that they're more coordinated during these fights is huge, too. They're going after the right targets. Every single fight, Remy was using his ultimate, his depth charge, onto Tails, shutting him down, and making sure that Bob Chin was there with good shockwaves every time. Even if it was just hitting one person, it was hitting one person who was a primary damage threat. And that's exactly what they did last game. I mean, this is... This is a guy that's known for assassins, and the way he plays Oriana, you definitely know that because he basically <laughs> just true. picks people off and uh, a ridiculous amount of damage coming out of him. But the catches they were able to do, the fights they were able to turn around, even when they were behind on gold, it's those dragons. You cannot give up this many dragons. You are going to lose the game if you're RMU. In the series so far, they've only managed to secure one, and that was after a big fight went their favor. I don't care how big Leo got, they weren't able to make the outplay, and Tails, He's got to be with the team more. That was a massive glaring weak point that uh, UBC were able to exploit time and time again. Yeah, and the fact that he's pretty much got the weight of the team on his shoulders both games on details. They haven't had to carry top laner for Signature. You talked about Aurelia and these other champions coming up really big for him. Aurelia, Hecker, and Nar, those types of things. Not having those these games. Nope. Having to all. fall back on tanky things to try and supplement the tankiness of the team try to make them survive a little longer, it's not working. That first pick, Rek'Sai, I feel like they've got us change that up for the next game. Yeah, I, it's a little questionable. I don't know what it is, why they're, why they're trying to pinch that pick, not the Gragas, because if they go for Gragas, he just takes Rek'Sai himself. Mm -hmm. But he can't bat him out, too. I mean, that's, that's the thing. That's all there is. But UBC, they are up 2-0, and the next match could be the deciding one. But to break that last one down, we're going to go ahead and send it back to the NL test where Dash and crew are sitting by. Thank you, Pyra. I'm very right there. A lot needs to change, I think, for RMU going into this third matchup here. Game point, essentially, for, uh, for UBC here. He hit it nail on the head, Pyra said. Tails needs to be with the team more. But I actually want to like, rewind to the fact that their bottom lane, Tails, Mini Bestia, played really well in the early game. We saw a massive lead for Kalista. We saw good 2v2s, right, which is what, where they failed in the first game. And but then they didn't convert that lead into anything. And here's the thing. They gave Tails all the resources he needed to be successful. They did the lane swap specifically to get him ahead, specifically to get that free farm. He had a substantial CS advantage for the majority of the early game. Additionally, Mini able to shut down that Scion early camp, able to take three of those uh, little Raptors as well, totally disrupting that early jungle. So it looked perfect. It was coming together, and then it just failed to execute. It feels like they didn't use that advantage, and it went downhill from there. Yeah, that's been really one of the biggest problems here is that uh, first game, lanes didn't quite go RMU's way, this time a lot better. But again, the dragon control from there. It, it's not something that affects you until it stacks up, and then all of a sudden it's a massive problem. You let the first one go, okay. You let the second one go, well, we need to fight the next. And uh, just again and again, RMU, whether it's that their bot lane's not in the right place or they take these weird fights where they think they can win a 2v2 in the bot lane, it ends up being a 3v2, and that's right, a, a dragon. Yes, it gets a little bit messy with a mid lane fight as well, but at that point, you're taking fights you don't need to. You right. already have control over the lower half of the map. I think a little bit of excitement in the yeah. fact that they knew they were in a good spot. Yeah. They were even, if not ahead a bit, as you mentioned, taking a fight that was unnecessary. Dragon's coming up in 30 seconds. Just wait. Let's get to that. And so, uh, continuing on this Tails point, because as, as Pyra mentioned, off in other lanes farming when they should have been grouped. And then even a step further, team fights. The positioning was off individually there. We saw a couple fights where RMU, right to take the fight, they had, the, they had a good idea. They eliminated one of the frontliners very early on in the fight. And then a misstep by Tails, he gets blown up by an Orianna ult, and every single time that shockwave was yeah. saved for Tails. And that's all their damage right there, gone. And paired with that depth charge, there's really not a whole lot they can do. They have to respect it, and they have to back off. They cannot continue to engage in that, and they did so anyway. And it was a really rough situation for them because at the end of the day, Remy was on point with the depth charge, consistently using it to zone out, as were the rest of the team. Because they built this single damage threat comp, more, I mean, Cho'Gath does a little bit, but really it comes down to the Callista. it was I'll burn all the CC without hesitation on this Callista, And when she's gone, Orianna, and, uh, and Lucian just get to run rampant through this team fight. Exactly, and you, you spoke a, a little bit about the Cho'Gath. It's a champion that RMU have run time and time again before. This time, 
with a Cho and a Callista, you basically get one rotation. We were talking about this during the game. You get about one, one and a half rotation of abilities on Cho'Gath during these fights, and Callista's already dead. Yep. <laughs> so by the time the second one's ready, you're alone. You've just come out of Zonya's. You can't do too much. And at that point, it, it's just that the rest of the team is falling apart. And we'll, we've, <laughs> we've said it before, we'll hark on it again. RMU need another damage threat. Yes. They need another serious damage threat, not only for team fights. They need somebody, uh, like a top laner, like, maybe like a Rumble or an Aurelia, somebody that can teleport to an early game fight and not just provide crowd control. Provide serious threat at that 15 to 20 minute mark where you're looking for the second, third dragons of the game. That isn't just, I've got to protect tails. Yeah, and I think the reasons for that change are threefold or manyfold, um, <laughs> which is that, you know, one, yes, having another damage threat is going to allow for mistakes to be made and yeah. be less punishing, right? Or punishable, rather. Uh, two, recognize which of your players is performing or which is, or who is not performing today. Individually have not been, uh, you know, as wowed, expected. Wowed by, by Tails, uh, Tails' individual play. If he's not stepping up on this day, put him on something more support like yeah. Sivir. Put him on Graves Lucian, someone that can just front load some damage, has a little bit of survivability in team fights himself. And yeah, the, it, it, no. And the ahead. thing about this pick is, is he's played the Jinx, he's played the Callista in the past, but it's never been as the solo damage threat on the team. In the past, he's had a Gnar in the top lane. He's had that Cho'Gath in the mid lane, but they've snowballed the Cho'Gath early. So while he does have experience on these champions, the circumstances and the team comps are completely different, and it's surprising to see them uh, try to force this on Tails when he's never really been the hyper carry of a team on his own. And that's a really big point, especially when you talk about previous games that they've had. I would like to see Tails go to something like a Siva, something more orthodox, as you said. They've run Siva before. They played it in the games against Manitoba, against University of Michigan. He's had a good record on it. What it does is not only give him a safe champion, it allows RMU to control the pace of the team fights. You hit the Civ ultimate, everybody's going forward. You can get the right angles in team fights. It provides a far more aggressive game rather than being patient to try and set up your own team fights. Yeah, and the trade off there is that then you put Signature on a carry like champion, as you mentioned Aurelia, Rumble, Hecarim, somebody that yeah. has a little bit more effect on the team fights. And all all that does is force British Columbia to make a change, even in Champions League. Like, you have to, right now, UBC is sitting pretty. They're very comfortable because we go into Champions League and essentially, now they did change three picks, but the team that RMU drafted is still the same. Same it's still, objective. It's still the same objective, which is like, all right, let's have our one damage threat scale and eventually maybe we'll just roll through the team. All right, as soon as you lock in Aurelia, they have to react. Something's yeah. got to change. And at least then you give yourself a different set of circumstances to work within the game to maybe end up with a different result. And I actually think if you're army, you, you go completely different here. Zyrene's talked about it a lot there. If they end up on blue side, which uh, we're still yet to find out before this game starts, if they end up on blue side, they are, ban the they wreck are side. side. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it here. It, it is kind of confirmed. <laughs> I didn't want to go with it just in case. Ban the wreck side this time pick the Sejuani or force the Sejuani ban, and then you pick the Gragas. You've got heavy engage, consistent engage, then you pick up a follow-up to it. A lot of damage, difficult for UBC to deal with. And for Oberon, I mean, it's just early jungling is not his style. He doesn't like early aggression. You see him consistently focusing on that Sightstone buy. And while that ward control has been absolutely crucial for RMU in their map movement, uh, it doesn't really benefit the Rek'Sai early game, which is his strongest point as far as this team should be concerned. And to be clear, we're, we're talking a lot about what RMU needs to yeah. do here because UBC, I feel, doesn't need to do much nope. different, right? As far as they're concerned, the, this strategy has worked twice in a row, and that's and that's why we're focusing on what RMU is it needs to do. It is not because uh, we're ignoring what UBC no, no. has <laughs> done. It's just, hey guys, you do your thing. Same like you have that Oriana that's working fantastically. Uh, Pyra mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. You're playing it kind of assassin like, holding the shockwave for just the one person. But if that one person is the threat, you're playing it correctly. Their early dragon pressure and objective pre pressure has been really significant this yep. time around. I mean, giving up only one dragon so far this series, hitting five dragons both times. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of criticism for the way that they're playing. No, and especially coming into this, we. Based on yesterday's performance, RMU had cleaner games. And that made us think maybe UBC, a little bit rough around the edges here, maybe RMU's cleanliness and you know just crisp play is going to be enough. But UBC, they're showing that 
uh, yesterday was a little bit of a, a, a blip, a road bump on the way to their regular play, and, and UBC, uh, uh, they've changed everything. They're not playing their tank strategy. They're playing like a team who just feel comfortable on the stage. And the thing that UBC have been really good about is adapting in-game. We saw, obviously, I praised Mini Beastie for it, taking the early Raptor camps, but the adaptation. They roam through the jungle, they clear the first bottom side of the double jungle, immediately the three-man gank into the mid lane, they yeah. force the summoners, they get the first blood, and I mean, that's smart play. I think most players would flounder, and UBC pulled it together and got something out of that despite an early disadvantage. All right, I do want to step away from this match for just a moment and recognize, I mean, one, the scale and size of this event, the way that competitive esports has flourished in the collegiate scene so far this year, but also take a second to recognize the club scene that has grown throughout the nation in the collegiate scene. When I came into USC as a freshman, I was looking for people who played lead, and I thought that was a good way to make new friends. I'm somebody who tends to have kind of a difficult time meeting people and making friends, and through USC Esports, I've really made a ton of incredible connections with so many people. The club uh, helps make USC's large campus feel a little bit smaller. USC Esports is all about both the casual player and the competitive player. At the beginning of the year, we threw a Smash event, but later on we threw a League of Legends tournament. We try to just make sure that everyone is represented and everyone's voice is heard. When you have this kind of collegiate esports scene and you get to tap into this whole network of friends and connections and people that you never would have met if you hadn't had that kind of common factor in collegiate esports. We really do generate these relationships that people want to maintain after they graduate. They don't just graduate and forget about it, they want to come back, they want to see how the club's doing. That if you want to start a club on campus, it's a really easy way to bring people together to hang out and, and create like a really close-knit um, community. I really just can't emphasize enough, just, just do it. It all started out as just a couple people wanting to get together and play League of Legends with each other. Go for it. You'd be surprised how many people have common interests and are looking for the same kind of collegiate experience that you are, so you'll find it's a lot easier than you think. You know, make it a really fun, casual experience where people can just have a good time. A lot of people really focus on raising that competitive team that can go beat up uh, RMU or the other UC schools or whoever, but for me, it's always been more about having a place where people can come and feel welcome. College is one of the most important parts of your life. It's where so much of your life changes and make esports such a part of these formative years of, of my life it really means everything. Fantastic to see the growth of these programs and the collegiate community, but also very interesting to kind of get some perspective on the juggling that these guys have to do in terms of uh, playing at a, such a high competitive level, but you know, still perform academically, you know, and, and have that college experience that you you want to have. And it's exciting to see such huge participation rates. I believe we have like 300 collegiate clubs across the nation, and it's just continuously growing. So it's just awesome to see the, the group participation, the support not only for their teams, but also for, for their own kind of league environment. All right, well, refocusing back on this match, these are the two teams that are kind of heading up that competitive push in the collegiate scene. So real quick, I want to just kind of recap what we're thinking going into this match in terms of adjustments that need to be made. Wow. I mean, we, we've said it a couple of times. I'll, I'll go a slightly different route here. Uh, RMU for their adjustments, they, they've got to throw the, the playbook they've been using game one and two out the window. Go go for something completely different. Even if everything that you've said is, okay, we're just going to do the same strat, it's just the execution, go with something different, it, completely different. And on the side of UBC, same old, same old, you know, it's, uh, if it's working, why, you know, there's no reason to change up the strategy. I mean, there might be some variance in the top lane picks, but by all means, if they ban away the LeBlanc, keep, pipping, or keep picking Bob Chin, that Orianna, your bot lane has had a lot of flexibility. I personally would like to see the Nautilus again, but because they're so far ahead, as long as the general idea of the team comp remains the same, they're pretty free to mix up the picks. All right, well, will RMU run it back three games for that reverse sweep? Or will UBC take it, close it out, 3-0 shutout in our next game? We're going to throw it over to the casters to get it underway.